I'm ready. And we're live. <laughs> it was that quick. Uh, hi, guys. Apologies about the delay. We were literally having some technical um, issues. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what happened there. I actually thought it was me, but now I'm thinking it wasn't me. So I'm just going to say it wasn't me. <laughs> So uh, I thought it, I thought it was me, but it, it wasn't. So just let us know if you can see and hear us OK. Now, it's not going to be on the original event. So hopefully, brilliant. Someone says it's on. Oh, here we go. Classic. I need to go into the comments so I can see who's talking. Um, guys, can you do me a favor as you're coming on? Can you just like give a comment? Um give it a like, give it a love or, or something like that, just so we can push out the notification to let people know that we are live purely because like I said, I've had to change the, uh, the stream in on, on what we're doing. So um, just let us know. I think you guys can all see and hear me, which is good. Uh, sometimes these technical things um, don't work. I will say, I think the uh, the classic phrase should be never work with uh, children, animals, or Natalie when it comes to technology because uh, famous, she just famous it up. saying. I know. Famous saying, never work yeah. with Natalie when it comes to technology for sure. So, how is everyone? We've got Marta, we've got Noor, we've got uh, David, uh, Iani, Leon. Uh, a few other of you uh, guys are joining and jumping on. So, yeah, give us some likes, give us some loves, give us a hello. Uh, tell us where you are. How is summer slowdown? Um, is it working for you? Is it not working for you? I know a few of you on here that actually this is some of the busiest times of the year for you. So it's not necessarily uh, summer slowdown for everyone. Of course, uh, there we go. Slow season, but only 1% down uh, from last year. Uh, Chris has joined us. Andre's here. Um, Jay's here as well. Um, Chris says slow. Yes, you know, it is for the majority of people. It really depends on what type of business you've got. Uh, obviously, sorry, guys, um, I've totally ignored the elephant in the room. Johnny's here and he's joined us. Hi, Johnny. Where in the world are you? Hello. Uh, I'm in Croatia right now. So in Europe, in uh, back in the, in, the, in the time zone, which is, which is good. For, for this podcast. Last time I did this, it was, I think it was six o'clock in the morning. So, <laughs> or for, um, or for, um, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I was just going to say there is a difference between six o'clock in the morning, Johnny, and one o'clock in the afternoon, Johnny, right? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I go through phases where sometimes I'll, I'll wake up early and then sometimes I go to bed really late and I, I always change my patterns and it's uh, it's not a good thing. But yeah, it's better to better to do this at one pm than than six pm six am for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah Croatia I... for a um for a, for a wedding, and then I'm off to uh, New York after because there is a Amazon exhibition for it's called, it's called Amazon United, and it's for Amazon wholesalers. Uh, so I'm gonna go 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 to that because there's some big big time sellers there and. You know, the best thing to do in this in this in business is to network, isn't it? So you meet more people and then pick up things. So I always encourage people if you can make it, go go travel to these exhibitions and, and meet other people. So that's exactly what I'm doing, and I'm off to New York in a few weeks' time. Yeah, cool. Well, do you know what's really interesting at the end of this when we talk about uh, we've got guests coming on next week to talk about networking and a few other things as well. And um, I was talking to the person that's going to be coming on next week. We were talking about the importance of what it feels like um, for networking now to come back into the fold. Because obviously, post-COVID, for a couple of years, nobody could network. Then I felt there was a year kind of around afterwards where I think even if you were a naturally extroverted person, for a lot of people, COVID, you know, kind of set people back socially for quite a long period of time. And I think it's only now when people are wanting to get back out again, socialize, network and do all these type of things. It's taken a little bit of time for people to uh, recover from COVID, um, you know, from the isolation, uh, essentially. Me, you know, I... I can't wait to get back out and do those sort of things again normally. But even me is, like I said, for someone who I would consider myself to be on the extrovert side of things, it, it kind of a long period of time with just speaking to 
you're near and you know the immediates and things like that that had an impact i think yeah for sure i think if you're in your in your 20s and before you have families and other commitments and have that freedom to to travel and be where you want just sort of surround yourself even renting a house together with other business owners who are in the same field it's just going to accelerate your growth so much so much quicker than if you you're doing this on your own right so mm -hmm. that's one of the tips is that for sure is just just network more and then surround yourself with other other sellers and it's uh it's insane how much how much growth you can get like you know i've been in the game for a long time and you know being in mexico with other amazon sellers it's, it just helps it helps because there's other skill sets they have other expertise that can give you pointers and lead you in the right direction so it's it's, it's, it's well worth the value yeah, absolutely. And I think sometimes you have to pay out for events and they are a cost. Obviously, it's a business yeah. cost at the end of the day. But the amount of people that I have met at events that I have either formed relationships with, uh, some sort of partnership with or, um, you know, something like that, it is worth its weight and gold. Even if we're not talking about doing anything like this, but like I said, that one person that you can end up talking to that could become, um, you know, sort of almost a business brother in arms, essentially, where you can talk about things at a certain similar level, you might be at a certain point in your business, it is massively important. So we're going to be encouraging networking so much more uh, moving on. We're definitely going to have some sort of meetup around Christmas that we're going to plan ourselves. There's a couple of things to let you know about as well. Um, obviously, Johnny's Mr. World Traveler. So, you know, he's going to be our eyes and, the, and ears around the world, hopefully meeting interesting people and, um, you know, uh, opening doors in, in certain areas uh, for us, you know, not only for your own business, obviously, for for everyone here introducing so we can get on different types of guests at different point in, in, in business for sure. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. So it's Amazon United. Um, was it, I think Brian was asking which one it was. So yep. yeah, that'll so, be an interesting so, one. Yeah. So it's got, you know, the classic sort of Scott Needham who, who ran by boxer, uh, Amazon mm -hmm. lit, uh, yeah. Watch me Amazon. People like that who've done wholesale and done eight figures, and uh, I've, I've met I've met Scott before, um, and you know, if you have to pay up a few thousand pounds or thousand dollars to go to New York and go to these exhibitions and make a trip out of it, you you pretty you know you might pick up that one piece of advice that will save you that money in, in qu quite quickly. Because uh, at the end of the day, in business, it's it's all everything's quite simple, really. And all it takes is someone just to trigger that thought in your in your head, and then go make that change, which will then make you a lot more money than you are doing now. So, yeah, I really highly highly encourage it. Um, just meeting people, yeah, go make that trip to New York. We're definitely going to all be about the networking uh, over the next few weeks. For well, next few months, definitely for sure. So, um, why is this not working? The comments don't seem to be working for some reason. Anyway, um, so yeah, good to see everyone. Master saying my sales are not actually bad for the summer slowdown, uh, similar to last October November levels. So I'm okay with that. Rachel's joined us as well. Welcome. Uh, Chris is not the worst it's been, but definitely you can tell people are away. So yeah, absolutely. We're at the culmination now, really, of what will be the quietest few weeks of the year we've spoken about this on the hive anyway as well so in in my personal opinion based on uh experience and you know a few insights being a parent you know uh going on holiday you know all those kind of things as well this is for traditional business i know not everyone watching or, or who will watch this because you're always going to get some people that um, are not doing exactly the same models, obviously. Um, for the traditional side of what we normally talk about, these are probably going to be the busiest, uh, sorry, the busiest, the, the quietest three weeks. And it really comes down to a, a couple of things. It comes down to um, we're halfway in what is a very expensive month for a lot of people, probably the majority of the buying audience in the UK. Uh, this is where... All of the, uh, you might pay it out for a holiday at this point. 
the uh, the kids are nagging you to take them out on days out and and things like that. So and we're halfway between paydays as well. So people are starting to feel the pinch a little bit uh, this time of the year. And also, so not only financially um, are they feeling the pinch, they're also going to be distracted by kids and holidays and and everything else and and getting that concentration uh back to normality and the kids have been off for what probably three weeks by now so parents are pulling their hair out and you know that type of thing so psychologically it is a very quiet period of time and now this is when you start also seeing a lot of the main retailers starting their sales as well so i ultimately uh, you know if you're doing traditional retail arbitrage or you're doing arbitrage now is actually a really good time to start sourcing i know matthew wright talks about it this is the time where if you are specifically on the retail arbitrage side you tend to focus on sourcing as opposed to selling uh, during this period of time, which is, you know, really good advice if if you have that uh, deposition, um, you know, to to uh, or that part of your business, essentially. So um, obviously, Johnny, you're quite stable throughout the year. But do you even see slowdowns during this period of time? Or is it because I, I know you're relatively unaffected by seasonality? Yeah, we're unaffected by seasonality. Um and I don't think this is a, a market indicator, but we had our best month ever last in July. And it doesn't seem to be slowing down in August. Um, are you okay? Yeah, <laughs> Look for the comments. No, no, no. Yeah, I couldn't. I've got my other screen is being blocked, so I couldn't see the comments. So, yeah, no, sorry. Carry on. Yeah, so I, again, I think we had our best month ever in, in July. And then in August, uh, it doesn't seem to be slowing down. But that's just more. Um, we're improving as a, as a business rather than an indicator of the of the market. I think we're just getting better at business, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like we're literally um, for us, it's just keeping all our different teams uh, accountable and and then really tracking key metrics and, and and really keeping holding people accountable every every week. And um, what we've been implementing in, in in our business for the last couple of months has been really really helpful. And you know, if you have questions about it, then ask me in the hive. <laughs> um yeah no. yeah i was i was gonna say so you know you're at a period of time certainly within your business now where it's your growth is coming from you becoming more efficient right as opposed yeah. to um you know just turnover essentially it's about you being more focused in your business about yeah being more working smarter not harder essentially exactly um putting a lot of emphasis in the last month on, on the warehouse and really trying to sort that out. And uh, we, we, were, we had some issues and they, we were actually starting to squash them now by holding, getting more of a data focused, um, focusing more on the data in the warehouse and then and sharing that with my warehouse manager and really trying to optimize everything in the warehouse and sort out staff accountability and, and really trying to fix that side of the business where people could, feel like they can't slack off and making sure the output remains even throughout all the staff members. And um, it's really sorting that side out. It's getting the warehouse. It's hard, you know, it's, it's hard to have a, to start a warehouse and it does, I think it does take a couple of years to get the systems going and uh, getting all your staff working as they should be. <laughs> I think that's always, a, always a tough one without the systems in place. But I think we're finally getting to a place where things are just working really well. Yeah, absolutely. Even on the sourcing side, it's it's, it's much better now. We're, we're we're working a lot more on new deals. We're not just buying everything and, and and anything now. We're really analyzing every new product we buy in, and there has to be a good reason we're going to buy this new product in. So we're you know really trying to consolidate our portfolio rather than sort of keep going wide. Because uh, it's just again, you know, if you have five thousand products in your warehouse and a three thousand square foot warehouse, it's just mayhem. So. We're trying to cut everything down and consolidate everything down and make make life easier for, for everyone. Uh, concentrate on top sellers and, and all that. So, you know, I spent two years going wide and now I'm going the other way, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a really part, uh, important part of what I wanted to talk about today, because I think ultimately it the the business world, uh, the e-commerce, uh, the e-commerce world that I mean the whole world's been disrupted you know obviously for the last three years uh, ultimately 
uh, down to the C word, down to COVID. And, you know, people might think, God, COVID's over. Why are we still talking about it? Because it's had such a game changing effect and the lasting effects it will have on business moving forward, some positive, some negative. You know, um, I was talking about this to someone earlier. We've probably got to expect this year. We track a lot of the metrics on Amazon in, in regards to demand in terms of, um, you know, what we're looking at versus this time last year and the year before that and year before that. Obviously, the two main years over COVID, we saw, you know, much higher growth than we would normally expect to see over that period of time. But this year, I think um, what we're looking at at the moment, not necessarily saying that it's going to be uh, the case, but indications point to what we're looking at is we're looking to see a bit of drop off in demand uh, this year. But ultimately, it's still not going to be like catastrophic it's still higher than what it was before covid so it's a little bit of a, a cause and effect so this year i think in terms and and moving forward what johnny's spoken about there are periods of time in your business especially if you're working a replenishable model which is what we're going to talk about today and if you do not have any type of replenishable element in your business then I don't think it's over for you or, or whatever. I just think you're making it much harder for yourself to be able to grow your business um, and to be able to add stability to your business moving forward. And people might think, well, OK, replans don't work in this country the way that they work in America due to the side of the market. But, Johnny, you're the exception to that. You know, um, well, not exception. You're proof of that, that the replenishable model does work um but and i think even you know now it's not about size of the business it's about you know how you work that business and like i said it's about making sure you're staying in stock in certain areas before looking at at new mod you know new SKUs and things yeah exactly it's it's focusing on those top sellers and ensuring you're getting the best prices negotiating your best sellers the prices down of your best sellers down so the cost price and making sure you're always in stock of those top top sellers that sell like crazy and that's that's one of the focuses we're really really trying to do um you said about the slowdown but i do believe that amazon's revenue did actually increase this year it did? so yes yeah, so I, I still think we're actually on the growth we still are growing i just again it is july and it is august so naturally everyone sells will will be down but you know this q4 should be better than last year's because our the revenue is still still growing the market is still growing so and also yeah, inflation I, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i think overall we're still going to see a reduction in in the demand in the see we track the seasonal piece because it's one of the easiest ways to do it overall okay. there are more people that are shopping on amazon than have ever been shopping on amazon you know it's yeah. it's as simple as that in terms of a static customer um you know covid increased the amazon um customer base phenomenally i don't think they've ever still i don't think we've seen the actual figures of what it increased but we all know that people were turning to amazon who had never shopped on amazon before or anything like that so it exponentially in increased it now after covid obviously they were going to lose a certain amount of customers people that wanted to you know go back to physical shopping uh people were probably paying through their nose a lot for uh products at that period of time as well we are still in a growth trajectory on amazon and that growth um you know in terms of sales on amazon is still increasing and it's in a much healthier position than it's ever been so i don't want anyone to confuse what i'm saying with demand being down demand will, is still always tracking down compared to the covid years in terms of what people are looking for because how we measure it is it, it comes down to the simple rules of supply and demand in those covid years OK, um, demand massively outweigh its supply, whereas now there is exactly the same amount of people probably looking for the stuff. But there's more places to be able to find the products, uh, essentially. So it doesn't mean that e-commerce is on a decline that is constantly increasing. Overall, Amazon is constantly increasing. But the metrics that we track against um, 
as demand from this year to let, let last year are ultimately always going to be in the seasonal way because it's the it's the easiest thing to be able to do it. It just means what we're talking about is areas of demand are going to be less concentrated. So exactly what Johnny has said. So this year it's all about going, um, you know, making sure that you are covering specific areas, you know, not spraying and praying. It's going to be a bit more strategic, whereas you could spray and pray when, you know, there are so many people looking in certain areas. It's the, the areas of concentration are going to be a little bit more diluted this year. Yeah, I think it's a balancing act. The, the reason you go wide is obviously to diversify. Amazon, obviously, last a few weeks ago, you know, pulled a so many different listings because of the G uh, GS1, wasn't it? So they, they yeah. pulled so many listings. You know, for a long time, they were pulling listings because of like food safety and all these different uh, warning flags. So they were constantly buy box suppressing listings and do all these different things with different bunch of listings. So my thought process before was, all right, let's go wide then. So to sort of counter that. But then you've got to think, okay, if you go too wide, then your actual operation operational overhead then increases and then it's like a balancing act between okay i don't want to have twenty thousand and one skew and just go crazy um or fifty thousand one skew and just go like that which i know someone's doing that in america by the way and they're they go investing like all their money in one skew one a's and then they're just going all in and i feel like it's almost like gambling a little bit <laughs> but uh there's a there's a there's definitely a balance right it's definitely mm -hmm. a balance to it to where have a wide enough portfolio where you're sort of diversified, where if an ASIN gets pulled, your business doesn't get damaged, but at the same time, you have a, a small enough one where you can really concentrate and get the best prices for those SKUs you have and, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think this is what it's about. You could concentrate, you know, massively and, you know, agree with what Jess says there. Demands change for different products since COVID and, and that. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's exactly where, um, you know, certain types of seasonal products were massively in a massive lack of um, supply over those periods of times. So it doesn't mean the Amazon shopper ha is going elsewhere. It just means it's refocused into different areas. And, you know, that's why you need to be strategic and and not have the same game plan for every year, because that's exactly what have, happened with Advent Calendar Gate. You know, um, the first COVID year, there was a massive lack of Advent calendars and those that sell them, you know, probably buy a house at the end of it, you know, that were really deep on Advent calendars. The following year, what happened? Well, um, you know, just as much demand but everyone had more supply so you you know people were left with thousands and thousands of 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 advent calendars so you always have to take things um the past doesn't always equal the future but it's a good place to start essentially you know you just have to be a little bit more um you know cautious and and know when when products have their seasonal peaks and when they don't have their seasonal peaks but it comes back to ultimately you know building this replenishable business or certainly having that as a big focus on your business you don't have to worry about seasonal peaks because like johnny says you're never really in a period of time where it's kind of peaks and troughs if you've always got a you know a replenishable side of the business and it depends how much you want to you know add it into your business you know 80 20 works uh work from that point of view if you don't have any part of uh, a replenishable area in your business at the moment, then look to add in 20%. Or if you have got a replenishable type of business, look to have it around 20% and diverse, uh, sorry, 80% and diversify 20% and move the markets closer together. You know, that's the way I was kind of look at it. Um, Matthew says, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, someone says, I think it's Sean that says, uh, I wouldn't be 1% down versus last year if I reinvest all my profits back into Amazon, but I believe in multiple streams of income. Yeah, that's definitely got to be Sean. Hi, can Sean. I just, can yeah, I just touch on the advent, the advent calendars as well? Yes. I think the issue of the advent calendars that is everyone is buying at the same price from uh, you know retailers, wholesalers, such as like Hancock's, right? Yeah. And I always notice like the av advent calendars from a place like that, 
is where it always gets. There's too much competition, and everyone's buying mm -hmm. at the same price. So it's just a race to the bottom. So, um, you know, I, th I think you need to mix it up a little bit and, and try and find where Hancock's are buying it from or potentially create a bundle with it or get a little bit something that's not super obvious. You know, people yeah. buying from Hancock's, buying the old, you know, Reese's Avant Calendar, and there's about 20 different listings of, of Reese's Avant Calendars and uh, <laughs> yeah. the ones that do work. Are, mm -hmm. are too saturated so yeah i think i think outside the box create your own listing etc mm -hmm. or, or or find better prices that you know if the price goes down you can still be competitive yeah, yeah absolutely hayden says totally or offer unique calendars high-end ones for example absolutely you know i think that with with these type of thing it's not just about your reese's it's not just about that type of thing for the reasons that johnny said but i actually last tuesday i did a really interesting well i thought it was interesting hopefully everyone else did uh i did a really interesting uh live session in the hive when we talked about starting to understand uh, seasonality and when to buy and sell and what's really interesting obviously that is for our paid members so I can't go into too much detail um, but uh, the crux of it is when it comes to selling products like that when traditionally you think is the best time to sell them is not the best time to sell them and it's about understanding the data and competition and and everything like that um, and how you can kind of get in, get out really quickly. So if you are a member of Hive and you haven't watched last week's live session and seasonality is something that you want to take advantage of this year, then that will be massively valuable to you. Um, if you're not part of the Hive and you want to join, let us know. We'll, we'll put the link on. Um, but, you know, those are the sort of things that we discuss at a much higher level. Uh, not higher level. Sorry, that's wrong. At a deeper level. Um, in some of those sessions, um, you know, and we started, I mean, it's, yeah, it's like mid August and we've started to talk about that sort of stuff already because, you know, it's, it's that time of year for sure. Um, so going back to the, oh, just, just what Matt has said, uh, summer hasn't really slowed, slowed down for us. I expect the poor weather has helped people sat indoors shopping. Yeah, that's a good point actually. So we've only looked at the negative side of it. And for a lot of people that I'm speaking to, the general consensus is summer slowed down, but not as bad as I thought. I would say if I had to take an average, you know, that's what it's going to be. And Matt makes a really good point there. The weather's been shocking. So you know, overall, although I'm looking at beautiful blue skies and brilliant sun today, uh, but overall, the uh, the weather has not been that good. So, yeah, that's probably had a positive impact, whereas it may have had a negative impact before. Yeah, that could be. That's always a good indicator, right? If it's sunny out and people more likely to go outside and do more activities yeah. rather than stay inside and shop on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But getting back to that kind of building, you know, obviously I used a little bit of a clickbaity uh, kind of uh, uh, title for today, zero to seven figures uh, in three years. And you know what's really interesting is I believe that now is possible for someone starting from zero more than I think I have ever believed it on Amazon, because I think that there's a deeper understanding now of uh, how Amazon works in portraying, you know, in what we teach and everything and work together as a community and, and some of the things that we're working on behind the scenes as well. And I genuinely believe that that's more possible now than it's ever been due to the level of understanding that comes around with being a uh, an Amazon seller now. I mean, you're the classic example, Johnny. You literally did go from zero to seven figures within three years, right? Yeah, I, I think a couple of years. Yeah. yeah, maybe one to two years. I got seven figures. Oh, was it? oh okay. Do you think you yeah. would have achieved it without COVID that quick, though? No, it definitely accelerated it, and yeah, uh, stuff like the bounce back loan. Yeah, the cheapest lending, the cheapest credit financing you ever get. So definitely accelerated. So I definitely had a. I was, I was fortunate, but uh, yeah, but I it definitely is what think you make you can, of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think in three years it's possible, especially in the UK where it's easier to access uh, credit. You know, capital and tap and Amer Amexes and stuff like that. Uh, in other countries where it's harder to access credit and now lending is getting more expensive, it might be a bit more tricky. But uh, yeah, I think as long as you can. 
managed to mm-hmm. credit and they managed like leveraging up and you know obviously interest rates have gone have ballooned through like have gone crazy now so it might be a little bit more difficult if you're going to take like amazon lending and stuff but yeah definitely possible in the uk yeah but i think there's more um like i said we we're now at a point where we understand a lot about the business and how it can um you know where certain things need to be implemented at certain points in the business and most of it i do not believe can be achieved without a um a replenishable element of the business at all because you need to be able to build upon that to have the the compounding effect to be able to have it's like cause and effect to be able to give you the cash flow to do certain things now someone like matthew uh hopefully you won't mind saying this he does not have a replenishable business uh i don't think there's really really uh, any part of his business that is replenishable. Obviously, he's a multi seven figure seller at the end of the day. But obviously, that is a combination of having his business for a, a long period of time. Whereas the ease, not the easiest, I don't want that to be misconstrued, but there is a, a very clear plan now how you can get from zero to seven figures within, you know, kind of three year period. And it's kind of a little bit, I would say, um, the plan that we're putting together to put into the hive to be able to guide people through this step by step at any point that they are within that business, they can pick it up if you're 18 months into it or whatever, you know, or if you're a beginner, if you're at the start, then you can just kind of slot in wherever you are at that point. And I wouldn't say that it's one clear model. And I think that's the difference. I think, you know, if you've got people selling courses, they'll sell a course on reselling, or they'll sell a course on bundles, or they sell a course on private label. Whereas I almost think the the blueprint for what it needs to be is kind of a lot of different working parts. And it's almost, uh, you know, Frankensteining a lot of different methods, stitching them up, putting them together and implementing them at certain points in that business. And that's what, you know, profit sting is going to be about. Yeah. I think with Matt's model, it's a lot easier to get to seven figures, but I think the scalability of Matt's model where it's end of line products and, um, you know, one-off deals, right? That's sort of Matt's, it's not a replan model, but I think with the replan model, it's so much more scalable where I think me reaching eight figures will be a lot easier than Matt's sort of business model to reach eight figures because there's so much more work involved in end of line and these one-off deals and constantly looking out for these sort of, uh, the deals that come up, right? So it's it's just a lot easier to build a replan business and have a lot of your mm-hmm. SKUs made up of replan stuff because you can just keep scaling and scaling and scaling. Uh, where one office, like you're always like replacing, 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 right? So you're not building and building and building. So it's uh, different things, yeah, different different okay. models. Yeah. I completely agree. And I think that, um, you know, it's you have to be a certain type of business person to have that uh, type of, of, of model anyway as well. But I think the thing is, when I originally entered into the Amazon space, it was sold on the online arbitrage model. You know, that's how mm. I entered the space. Um, well, it was actually through wholesale, but online that we ended up in online arbitrage. And the thing at the time worked incredibly well, which was that kind of model of, you know, replens wasn't even a thing. It wasn't even Mm. a consideration at that time, because obviously you were just scouting. You're always looking for new deals. You're all, you know, one of the phrases was you're only as good as your last deal, essentially. So it was almost that kind of Del Boy, always looking for the next deal, the bigger, better deal kind of thing. Always, always looking for that. Whereas traditionally, that model now, whilst it still does exist, there's no doubt about it, but it lends more towards, like I said, uh, what Matt is a specialist in is, uh, you know, retail arbitrage and um, relationships and negotiations and longevity in business. And, you know, and that knows for uh, spotting those deals as well. I think you almost need to become more specialized in those areas. Yeah. Whereas if you are going to go down um 
the the reselling route now there has to be an area of replenishable in the business i think otherwise i now consider what matt does more as a niche area and sorry matt i know it sounds like we're talking about you behind your back well not behind your back but while you're not here but i think it's a really good example to show whereas you've got one seller on one side of things like yourself johnny that's purely replenishable and the other side but it's this needs to be for the general market, I think, more of the norm. Um, you know, we need to get away from that always chasing the next deal. That's what yeah, the so mindset a, needs to adopt to. Yeah, so it's a grind, I think. Um, yeah, great, great margins, but it's definitely a grind to sort of maintain that and keep keep it going, right? It's a lot of work. And yeah, the, the replan model just is, it works great. And it's one of those things where, you know, for us now, some some of our SKUs, we're buying four pallets every two weeks now, every couple of weeks of the same SKU. Um, and we built that relationship. We had that replan uh, product and it's just, you know, producing thousands of pounds of revenue every, every month. And it's just sort of sending it. Now it's got to the point we've got, we've got the price down. It's just sending that email out, um, you know, every month or so to get that reorder. And it's just it's just easy. It's easy. Yeah. Um, this, yeah. It's, you've put, uh, the, the thing with replan model is it's a lot of work uh, at, the, at the start and then it comes easier, right? To negotiate that price down. Um, and once you've got that price down, you find the right supplier, got, got to the source, as some people say, um, and got the best price, then it's just a case of just pressing a button every, 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 every month and reordering that stock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's the important part as well that I think needs to be communicated. Absolutely. That replan work is long term, as in it's going to take longer to scale. Um, whereas um, arbitrage, buying and selling, flipping, you're going to see results much quicker Um in that, whereas replenishable takes longer to build. So that's why it makes sense to be able to ebb and flow with it at certain points in your business. So ultimately, if I was, if, if someone comes along, <laughs> yeah, David says B stocks has that button soon. Absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it's why the software uh, was created. Ultimately, it is to support a replenishable, building a replenishable business. That's what it has been designed, uh, you know, mainly to facilitate. Um, but if I was advising someone who is starting from scratch now, I would still advise them to start on arbitrage, you know, I would, because you, you can't simply go straight into wholesale. You can't do this. It can't do that. But it's being able to be fluid with the business models as you move through and hit certain milestones. And I think that's not what it is now. You can get a course that covers arbitrage. You can get a course that covers, um, you know, you can get well, hopefully my course that covers bundles and things like that. You can get a course that covers wholesale, whereas I don't think there's anything out there um, ultimately that will guide you through at what points and crossroads that you need to go to. So I think we're going to be truly unique in the hive um, with implementing that in. And what we're also going to do as well is we're going to get people off, um, you know, we're going to get people started on, on the, uh, the right foot as well. So I don't want anyone to think this is all going to be paid content. It's not, absolutely. This has always been a free content channel and it will always continue to be for people that are looking to, you know, grow their businesses uh, in e-commerce. We say we're not about the hard sell. If you want to come join us in the hive, great. You know, we have a good time in there. We get good results and things like that. But if it's not for you and you're not interested in, in paid content, you know, fine, no pressure from us. I don't want you to think uh, that we're all about paid content. Um, so we're definitely going to be releasing a lot that's going to facilitate because I'm kind of sick and tired uh, of uh, uh, people. Fight. What tends to happen is because we don't do any like paid advertising, we're all word of mouth, that type of thing. But I've discussed this before. Uh, we always, always <laughs> tend to be people that come and find us uh, come and find us as a bit of a last resort, really. And I know that doesn't sound flattering to us, but actually it is um, because we tend to get recommended when people have either lost faith, uh, you know, got ripped off or, 
you know, something like that, you know, so which is good from us from a reputational point of view as well. But I kind of want to save people being put in that position in the first place. So there's definitely going to be a lot more content um, that's going to be released through this channel that will hopefully prevent people from, you know, paying out thousands when they don't need to, because, you know, that's that's a big thing for us. Yeah, that's, that's always going to be the case. Where people were promising their promise of dreams, and they then they come to the hive and realize it's all about. So that's then I just sound like one of those guys who sells the dream now. But yeah, yeah. I know you're totally selling the dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we're always going to sell the dream because you know it, it it is what it is. And you know what? There are points you can't help but use certain words and 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 certain phrases. You know, one of the big things over the last twelve months that we've you know pivoted our business towards which will be reflected a lot in profit sting is that kind of four hour work week approach you know living that kind of millionaire lifestyle essentially but you know without having to have a million pounds in the bank with this type of business i don't believe let us know in the comments i don't believe there's any other type of better business that you can help move towards that kind of model if that is so what you choose so there's definitely going to be elements of that in it as well you know um just from my own personal win johnny you travel most of the world because of your business that pays the majority of it um you know matthew's king of um you know Hilton, he's Hilton King, uh, travels the world, uh, you know, always uh, getting his hotel stays covered by his business, his flights, you know, all of those extra benefits. Um, I, I'm eventually going to do a video on this. And I, I, I know people are waiting for this one as well. I was talking about this to someone earlier um, in February. No, not February. In March or no, what am I talking about? In May next year, we're off to Disney again. And if I was to price up that video, it, it, you know, that holiday of what it's going to be, it's eye watering where we're staying, how we're flying, what we're doing in that period of time. But it's going to cost me around a fifth of in physical money of what I should be paying for that holiday. And it's all facilitated for by the business. So it's giving you all of these extra benefits as well as, um, you know, uh, you know, paying paying uh paying your bills at the same time but i think what you can do is be really smart with this kind of zero to seven figures in three years utilize your corporation your company as well as johnny does as we do as matt does that you actually get to a point and uh i hope no one from the hmrc is watching this that almost um you know the government's paying everything for you because you want to be utilizing your corporations as much as possible to be able to facilitate your lifestyle and fund your life within obviously legal, uh, you know, <laughs> ways. Of course, you really want this business to be covering as much as possible. So you're not physically paying out. Yeah, that's what I mean about going to New York. It's a, uh, it's a business expense. Uh, I think it's a legitimate business expense because I, to the network and that's going to be able to pay by the business with with points and, and with and through the business as, as a travel expense so yeah i mean that my business funds yeah it funds everything like yeah. well it funds every, anything luxury it funds like i don't spend anything on myself through personally that is like luxury but uh apart from food <laughs> but uh yeah everything i do that's luxury as in sort of you know moldies and first class and all these different trips is always points and it's just that's that's definitely the best i think i've always i've mentioned this multiple times but yeah the, the points is definitely the my favorite part of the business the, the oh it the is it, i so, i so literally it's so much fun and uh last last time and this is what it's about definitely because last last year when we went to florida we paid physical money to upgrade we paid physical money to upgrade to our business class tickets for Florida, right? And it really annoyed me. It proper annoyed me that mm. we that I had to pay physical cash to upgrade it. I mean, my kids didn't care. They were living their best life. But it really annoyed me. So at that moment in time, I said to Matt, I am never going to pay physical money for this. There is a part of our business that is not facilitating and working efficiently as it is, and I'm not going to pay for these flights again. 
less than a year later, or sorry, just over a year later, I've paid for all of the business flights uh, for a fraction of the cost. Because, of course, you've got to pay your taxes and everything like that. So I've paid for a fraction of cost. But I threw down the gauntlet. I said to Matt, I'm not going to do it again. I found a way to make it work in the business. And that's what we did. And, you know, that's all going to be included, you know, that. And I'm not even going to say that's a complicated part of it. You know, like what Jess says here, uh, currently sat on the beach in Spain, thanks to Capital and Tap. There we go. It's it's that kind of facilitation of it. Uh, but I just want to go back to a few comments. Sorry, because I've been chatting away uh, too much, as usual. Nor says um, arbitrage is great stepping stone. Get the cash flow flowing through the business, access Capital on Tap. Amex and then pivot as needed. No, have, have you seen the blueprint already? Because that's, you know, <laughs> that's definitely one of the main functions of it. That's exactly what it's about. If you're going to be starting uh, from zero for me, uh, you know, for sure. Uh, Martin. Hi, Martin. Haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Uh, I looked at the hive recently, but there was no way to pay. Um, is there an issue on the site? Well, uh, I think that was probably around the time when we were upgrading uh, the site. So I don't know, Matt Wright, Matt Cromey, one of the Matts have, uh, they, it should be back up and running again now, but if not, I'll drop you, I'll drop you the link beforehand. But if you've got any questions, just drop me a DM and, uh, but we'll put, we'll, someone will put the link on here anyway. There we go. Matt's there like a superhero popping the link straight in. So that, you know, that one should work. Uh, we need a video for Natalie's tax saving tips. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to put my head above the parapet. On that I don't one. think it's the right domain for that. It's going, <laughs> no, going, it's out, to, going out to public. We yeah, already uh, are people reporting no. saying, "Look what they said in this video." <laughs> exactly, and you know me, I'll, I, you know, I, I'll say the wrong thing at the wrong time or something like that. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to stick my head at. Uh, look, build a good enough business, guys, that you can pay someone to work out your taxes for you. That's the way that I see it. Get a tax, but a uh, tax expert that will, you know, get you the best efficiency and that type of thing. I'm not a tax expert, and uh, a tax expert. Actually, that would be tax a better but tax expert. That would be a better word for it. I'm not a tax expert, and I would never claim to be such. I can only do what what works uh, for us, essentially. Yeah, sure. Just move to uh, yeah. I was gonna Sorry. say, just move to move to Paraguay, and you zero percent tax. There you go. Yeah, that's exactly. the that's the move. Yeah, definitely. A lot of my sure. friends are actually moving to Dubai now, um, just to sort of avoid that sort of because again, it's like sort of high-paying jobs, uh, yeah. and then and making that jump to to Dubai because it's just like, well, I, I can save yeah. a lot of money here and then retire in a few yeah. years if it works, right? Well, we yeah, we've already we've already said one of us one th one of the three of us is going to have to move to Dubai, and I think it's going to you know. Poor you, third world, you know, first world problems. I think it's going to have to be you, Johnny. Yeah. Gonna have to go speak. Ahead and... I'd have to speak to Jess about that. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and move to Dubai. It was interesting, actually. For the first time ever, I'm actually really interested in going to Dubai. I haven't been uh, interested in that before, but just something recently, I just sort of like thought, yeah, we're, we're going to go 2025. Uh, and again, do you know what? Amazon's going to pay for the lot. Well, within it's probably not. Like, it's not going to pay for the restaurants. The, the no, restaurants are, are, are crazy to get yeah, there. To get That's there. the cheapest thing. The cheapest thing about Dubai is to get there, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's when you're so there, to it's, like, it's crazy. To get there, to get there in style, and uh, you know, to stay at a really lovely place and have great experiences. Stop raining on my parade, Johnny. <laughs> like I said, that's why I was living the now. I was living the now. Uh, Amanda, hi Amanda. Uh, said, hope you have sunshine. Yeah, the sunshine's here today, so it's not too bad. But yeah, free energy bills. That's Sean. Food shopping, everything like that. It can all be facilitated by Amazon for sure. Uh, I'm not sure we put that actually. Oh, uh, Brian said, lived there uh, for six to twelve months with regular visits the year before. So yeah, let us know what it's like. Um, a lot of people love Dubai. Uh, have you been, Johnny? I've been twice, but I went when I was a lot younger. So I went with the family to Australia and we visited for four, four or five days. But 
I mean, amazing experience, but that was like a holiday experience. So I wouldn't know what it's like to like, like living there. But you know, I remember like the hotel having like a a, a river in the hotel <laughs> and stuff like that, where you could take a, a boat from one side to the other, uh, and like the hotel rooms being amazing and and the food being really good. But at the end of the day, it's just like a the thing about Dubai. It's just like you're importing the best things in the world, and it's all mm -hmm. manufactured, isn't it? It's not real. It's all you're importing the best chefs from around the world. There's no like local culture or local cuisine. It's not really. It's a holiday destination at the end of the day. Yeah. And yeah, with good restaurants, really good restaurants. <laughs> yeah, so that uh, will tick the box for you definitely. That'll make yeah, up. It's too that. hot. I think it's too hot to be honest. Do you, Isn't you it? Actually sound, you're sounding like me, Johnny. <laughs> I know. It's like oh. it's like 40, 40 degrees, right? Well, I think if you go in like February to April, I was reading that that's the optimal kind of time to be able to go. And it's all about experiences. You know, I'm not really interested in living in different countries. You know, for me, whenever I look at going somewhere, it is for that tourist experience. It's to experience yeah. it as a holiday as opposed to a, a, you know, a digital nomad. It's And it's funny, do you know what? I was talking to Hayden about this earlier and we were talking about, you know, big part of what he wants to do is traveling in the future. And it was you that reminded me of this just yesterday, I think, is there is a very big difference from um, using this business to work around the world. And it is using this business to experience holidays around the world. Um, and I never really looked at it like that before because I was having a go at Johnny and saying, look, you're in Croatia, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And I think at this point, you've not even stepped outside. Um, but like you said to me, there is a big difference between working somewhere abroad and going on holiday. Yeah, my my lifestyle in Croatia has just been terrible. I've, I, I, it's, it's been work, 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 to be honest. Um, that's the thing, we have a couple of businesses. It's just con constant, constant work. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. It's not like... Like my girlfriend, her family's here, uh, mm -hmm. and she's going to visit them and go to the beach. I'm like, well, I, I, I got to work. You know, I want to work, and I enjoy work as well. So I want to do it. That's that's the difference. Is I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, the difference is, is I, I walk out here in Rijeka in Croatia, and it's just like a different landscape, right? Different mm -hmm. temperature. You have the beach. You have really good pizza, <laughs> which is always a a, t a tick off the list for me um yeah it's just you're just working it's just as, as anywhere in the world but you just have a different background and different culture and different lo local food and that's what i really like um yeah. like mexico like mexico city was just obviously much different culture no one spoke english but the food was really good and the networking mm -hmm. was good and you're cl and you're close to america uh and i think every every place has its own quirks and every uh, has a nice thing and uh, to tell you the truth, we're, we're pretty sl we're, we're going to slow slow it down at some point and try and stay places longer. Um, probably spend a bit more time in Europe, not in UK, but somewhere you know south of Spain, mm -hmm. uh, Lisbon, and try and we're trying to calm it down a little bit because all this traveling does get a little bit crazy after a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think there was a period, wasn't there, probably about a month ago, where literally, this is not an exaggeration, we just didn't know where you were or where you were yeah. doing. And, and that must mess with you as well. It messes with your body clock. It message, you know, it must mess with you quite a lot, essentially, especially when you've got planned projects and big and big things coming, essentially, because you kind of never know where you're going to be waking up. Yeah, I think we're creatures of habit. And I, I think like, picking up a healthy good routine is, is by building those habits so when you're moving around every couple of weeks or every week it's really hard to build that habit you know because you've got to find that new gym right and you then you got to like get used to that new sort of routine and, and almost start up again every time it's like january's rolling around every time you've got to keep join a new gym and build up that that routine and um i think it's a lot easier to keep to a good scheduled a good he healthy schedule when you're Mm -hmm. when you're staying at a place longer right because you know you get to texas like for example if you go on holiday to, to texas or you go live in texas I, and you go there for a week i guarantee you can have brisket five days out of the seven days you know like it's because you, you got to try it so that's the thing when you keep moving around you're not going to keep to like a healthy lifestyle you're going to be eating yeah. all the, the corn corn on the cob and all that crazy health on uh, a texas portion oh, the yams, yams yeah, potatoes, yams. yaks or whatever it is, yeah. 
massive oh. slides and, and all that stuff. It's it's crazy. And, I went um, to I went to a friend's house and they had like he's a bit like you. He loves his meat and everything like that. He did a Texas <laughs> themed barbecue a few nice. weeks ago. Nice. And literally, I can't think about it too much because you literally see the dribble rolling down my face. It's the best food I've ever had at a party. And honestly, it was just, but it was so rich. That night, I was yeah, having yeah. like night, oh, it was so rich. I was having like nightmares galore because it was just, the food was just so, so rich. But oh my God, it was amazing. Uh, was anyway, it imported back brisket? In, was the brisket home? imported from Texas? Was it imported brisket? I don't know. I don't ask those sort of questions. <laughs> I just eat it. So when, yeah, yeah. I'll ask him for you. I'm going to see him this weekend. I'll ask him for you. <laughs> so when you get the Texas brisket, it's a lot more marbling, a lot fattier. So it's really hard to eat a lot of brisket because it is so rich and so fatty that mm. I I can't. I I'm a big eater, but brisket is the one thing I can't eat a lot of because you just instantly feel it's not full, but you yeah. feel a bit sick because it's rich Had a bell. and yeah. It's a tough one I to eat. Yeah, I could definitely feel that there was like a, a bout of g uh, gout coming on afterwards for the amount of like richness there is to that food. But yeah, I'd love to I'd love to experience it in, in real life, which we will at some point. Anyway, back on track. Uh, apologies, Brian. 2006 to 2012, he lived there. Uh, that was going um, going uh, talking about Dubai. David's going in November. Be interested to hear about that, David, actually, because uh, uh, I know that that was big plans for you to be able to go there. Uh, apparently, no November, December, the best times to go. Um, Dubai. Oh, yeah. Best time of year, but not great for Q4. Um, but February can be rainy. If I'm going somewhere like Dubai, I don't I suppose I don't really mind it being a bit rainy. I don't think it would have like a a really big impact but i don't know because you know you're not really going to be sunbathing there massively with the sort of heat i know i wouldn't be able to um but it's amazing for kids living there too and i think that's what's attracted me a little bit more is seeing how safe it is you know from you know it's super super safe from a security point of view for kids and families and and things like that and just sean there again talking more about you know company buys your meals when you're working away he doesn't he, sean you need to come on never mind the buy box at some point uh, to talk more about this i think nobody uses uh amazon more efficiently when it comes to paying for their life i think than you do uh you know flipping it over and over again uh the only thing oh there we go energy company is paying my council tax and water bills for me now there you go even we don't go to that level so uh definitely uh you can have it cover it uh amanda says uh i have had thailand and canada with thanks to amazon sales so very grateful for both so yeah i think this is how we want to start um you know kind of promoting this business not just from a you're going to buy a lambo overnight there's at different stages in the business i think when amazon is going to be ticking different boxes and i think that that's where there's a lack of understanding and i do not think we've always been me you know personally johnny and matt i think anything that we've always produced i consider us to be kind of a little bit ahead in terms of pioneering certain things and I think this is going to be the start of of a new way of learning. So, you know, I don't mean that from a wrong burgundy. We're kind of a big deal kind of thing. But what I mean is this is why it's so important to stay fluid uh, in the business, because at the end of the day, what worked three years ago doesn't work now. What worked three years before that didn't work then, you know, and you've always got to be adapting and changing. And I think, like I said, almost a Franken style style uh, business growth plan is what is needed uh, you know, moving forward for the times ahead and it will take into account different areas. So if it was me and I was looking to start the business, I wouldn't be looking at one specific model. Um, you know, either it would be, uh, you know, a bit of a mismatch uh, of everything or a mismatch, mismatch. don't know if that's the right word. A bundle of everything. Yeah. Always, always uh, excuse I think so, but at, at the same time, you you want to get really, really good at, at one model, and 
I think mm-hmm. that's 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 how you become rich. And you you find most people who become really rich is they've got really good at one thing. And the majority of their wealth doesn't come from multiple income streams. It comes from that one income stream. So what you'll notice about a lot of very, very rich people, all their wealth comes from one thing. So focusing on that one thing is is always key. And uh, a lot of wealthy people, people who diversify is, is after they've already made that wealth. And you'll find that 95% comes from that strategy or that that niche that they're in. Um, mm-hmm. So, well, I, yeah, when yeah. you're starting and learning, I think it's good to learn all and then and understand every, every side of it and just get really good at the at the Amazon game. Yeah, for sure. Well, this is it. And I think you're absolutely right. And this is something, you know, we were even uh, talking about a couple of years ago. It was you, you, if you look back at some of my videos two years ago, I am taught diversify, come off of Amazon, do this, do that. Whereas now, again, I really truly believe Amazon is the place to be. And, but you can protect yourself in different ways with different income streams within Amazon. And that's what this is going to be about from a physical selling point of view. So, um, whereas I would look at all the individual business models almost separately previously, like arbitrage, wholesale, private label, whereas I think overall kind of recoined it all now as a, apart from private label that remains separate as, you know, more of a reseller model as opposed to, you know, having those all individually. Yes, they all need their own specifics and at different time of the business. But ultimately, it comes down to building a what is that one thing, a replenishable reseller business. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I always think it's like you're building up, uh, you're always building up. So you're starting sort of online arbitrage and, and buy from any retailer or retail arbitrage and buy from any retailer. And then you might switch to, to wholesale and, and buy from like the smaller wholesale, well, the bigger wholesale, the, ch- the, uh, the chain wholesales like Best Way and stuff like that. And then you'll go mm-hmm. to the, the bigger wholesalers and the better ones and then more. And then eventually you get onto the sort of key suppliers and direct to brand. And I think it's, uh, it's a ladder, right? You start with online arbitrage and you keep going further down the supply chain until you're at the source and you start working with the, the manufacturer. So but it's all improving those skills, right? And I, I don't think you can jump straight to working with a key yeah. manufacturer and, and building a seven-figure account with a supplier when you've been in the game for two weeks. So no, when you first start, not. yeah, building that sort of skills and, and the and initial learning blocks is, is good to start with, with arbitrage. Yeah. And I think that's ultimately what I want to get away on. Where I want to impact on people is that it comes down to a lot of, training course in this this is me not bashing anyone else or anything like that that and I'm guilty of it I've been guilty of it as well I've been guilty of it just recently in the hive and it's made me you know um you know think about the certain ways of doing it I was teaching certain methods in how I do those certain methods which is very different to someone that's just starting or something like that so I actually had to remove a big part uh, of you know our paid advertising training and and currently uh, revideoing it now because it didn't hit the mark with the audience essentially because like I said it's very different for me to go in and say yeah I'm okay with hundred pound daily budgets and doing it like this and doing it like that and yeah it, it, I want to teach you how I'm doing it but I've got to remember and go back to a period of time of when I was in that starting out position and adapting it through that. And I think that's what a lot of courses and training and I was watching someone on TikTok the other day and, you know, showing off hundreds of pallets of stuff and things like that. And, you know, almost putting disclaimer in thing, uh, you know, join my course, you know, yes, you're not going to be able to do this stuff straight away, but it's something, you, you know, everything in the course is going to show you how to do it. Well, actually, does it? Because you don't operate at that same level at the start as you do at the end. So it's a little bit, you know, misleading. I don't think it intentionally from the person. I don't think they've thought about that cause and effect, essentially. But it's a little bit misleading because, no, yes, you can strive towards it. But you're not going to be able to implement what was taught at that time until you get to that level. So that's why I think learning needs to, you know, change, essentially, that it covers different parts of the Amazon selling, you know, journey um, and at certain points and where to implement certain models and 
at point like you were talking about you've spent the last 12 months growing now it's about the next 12 you know next period of time in your business about getting more efficient you know it's all these different types of areas so that's you know ultimately what we're going to be focusing on in our free and paid content certainly for a certain period of time for the foreseeable yeah absolutely absolutely should we uh should we call it there should we call it there or is yeah. that are we, we were going to talk about disbursements but um i don't we're know if you want to touch on that <laughs> we're over it now um yeah well there's nothing really to talk about because it kind of got rescinded uh by amazon anyway so you know we'll talk about it at the time if and when it comes in i know that but do you know what very quickly i will just pick up is that um I was thinking, well, okay, a lot of people are going to be happy about the fact that they rescinded it. But actually, I don't think that there are many people left with those style of accounts. Certainly, we're in the minority compared to the majority of sellers who do not have that facility. So, I don't have it. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. I, um, I think. Yeah, I, I know you Feels, hate it. Or... It's unfair. <laughs> <laughs> but just quickly, devil's advocate, do we not? Are the older sellers not rewarded for loyalty of being, you know, being sellers longer on Amazon? It's like being grandfathered in. Could you not place that argument? No, I just, this is not a level playing field. I, I think like any platform should have a level playing field and I think it should be even so all sellers have equal opportunity. I, I don't think, I think people have an access to being able to recycle their infantry two weeks earlier just because they're an old account. It, it promotes uh doesn't promote entrepreneurship it doesn't promote new sellers to to join because it's um it's an unfair unfair edge i think it's really unfair to be honest on on on, on us because you know people who get their money two weeks before they, they can reach that's a two-week recycle improvement it's a lot of it's a big big difference um no, I, I, I don't think so i think i think um i don't think people should be grandfathered in to that sort of thing no. no, I think, I think yeah. it's just too much of an advantage. Yeah. And what I will say, though, is when you get to the point where the transition occurs, Amazon needs to be because it's Amazon that's caused this, not the sellers. So I think, you know, like Amanda's uh, Amanda saying there, who I, I know will be the, on the old style of account anyway. Um, I do agree it needs to be a level playing field, but Amazon need to facilitate the people better that are on the old system because it's not their fault. And I've seen a lot of people say, well, they should prepare for this. But Amazon has never made any type of indication that that would be removed. So it's almost like Amazon need to find a way to transition people. And I think that's the main issue without any type of notice being told that all of a sudden, you know, your cash flow is going to change. It either needed to be a longer period or, um, you know, a notice period or Amazon need to do more to help sellers with the transition of it. If it's a staged uh, transition or something like that, I understand why older sellers uh, were causing so much fuss over it because it was just like, OK, that's stopping now you know, kind of thing, which I don't think is a fair, you know, depending on, you know, the big level of your business. So, yeah, I agree. Amanda says we did have three months notice, but they didn't make it clear in classic Amazon example uh, of what it, um, you know, what it would be. So, yeah, so um, the email came out in, in May. Yeah, but apparently it went to a lot of people's junk email. So people didn't actually see it. I saw it. I saw it, but at the time, I just didn't register what it was. You know, to be perfectly honest, I actually thought it was to do because it came out around the announcement at the same time in the US where uh, I thought it was the introduction of what they were doing in the US, which was um, where you can pay to have your money given to you earlier by Amazon. It's an earlier dis uh, dis uh, disbursement system. So it was a bit of a big shock. But thankfully for me, we've started selling in the, um, you know, the US on an arbitrage business between now and then anyway. So which we have had access to the new style of payment system. Had we have not had that, I mean, we're OK with the transition because we've got used to it over the last year with that of part of the business anyway. So you know handling cash flow and money in and money out and everything like that but if you do, have not had that which a majority of people haven't then of course it's going to be a massive shock 
Yeah, massive shock. Yes. And you just got to replace that with with lending and 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 pre plan how you're going to get access to that capital. And and unfortunately, it's going to be um, an extra half a grand, probably, or, or an extra um, x amount on in capital from 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 loans. Um, it's a pain, yeah. but it's the right move. Um, I think they should. I think they should have gone the other way around. To be honest, like Amanda just said, they should make it sensibly fair, and I think it should be the other way around where they should give everyone access to um to their funds quicker because it is ridiculous my, my balance is about 50 just to give you an idea my balance is about 50 to sixty thousand every time i go to disperse and i can't get all yeah. of that out no so I, i'm always got thirty thousand plus just sitting there and they're holding on to it um yeah. how much is that like in, in interest right Oh, it's ridiculous. And especially with interest rates, um, you know, heading towards 6%. Ultimately, Amazon is now laughing literally all the way to the bank. And the fact that the, it's it just seems so odd to me, the fact that they've made this change when interest rates are going up. And, you know, talk about a win-win situation from Amazon because they can put the cost of their lending up. But at the same time, they're also making so much more on the cost of uh, what is being held in their bank accounts. So, yeah, Amazon, that's why you see their profits and their bottom line going up and, and you're going to see those going up. So, you know, but I can't hold that against Amazon. It's an enterprise at the end of the day. You know, that is what a business does. Um, is make money. We all know the rules, but like I said, yeah, they aren't very clear in their communications, um, you know, in some of the time. But yeah, they're making billions, yeah, on interest. Uh, there's no reason, I agree, if I'd, you know, if Amazon came to me now and said, what's the best solution? Put everyone on the old system. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it should be. There's no reason. Maybe with, with some sort of percentage of reserve, depending on how much you sell for refunds, Something like that, but you know, not what it needs to be. Um, yeah. so, well, Amazon, yeah. this is the crazy thing in 2020 when money was free. Uh, Amazon locked in 10 billion at 0.8% interest. So they leveraged up 10 billion at 0.8% interest rate. And then they're lending it out to us at, at 12.99, 13.99, 15.99 APR. So obviously, there's a massive return on that. So mm -hmm. this is smart. I, I don't know if that still exists. I, I don't know when that expires, but it's mm -hmm. <laughs> they're making good money on that for sure. Well, we know the biggest parts of their business, I suppose, like, I don't know, maybe some sellers, the biggest parts of their business where they don't make the profit is not on what they sell, uh, but it's all of the extra services and the leverages and, and everything like that. So, but yeah, yeah FBA is it, it's not... they don't make money from fulfillment. Like that. I think yeah. that's a loss maker, right? That that enables everything else. I don't think they've ever made really money from the fulfillment. Like they can't yeah. be. It's so cheap. And even Amazon, yeah, even Amazon has said they're reducing their product range as well in terms of what they're going to be selling because they're making so much money elsewhere that they don't need to. Um, just quickly before we wrap up, a couple more things. Mark, um, I think got tagged. Mark Penn on it. You know how they're going to. You know how. Um, you know, they're going to be affected by the new disbursement systems, affected by the changes. Hopefully, Mark will be coming on, uh, never mind the Bible, so we can discuss that at some point in the future. Um, and yeah, I'm personally, I think it was Andre that asked, I have two accounts personally on the old system, uh, the old, you know, instant disbursement system or platinum account, what we used to refer to it as, where I can re, uh, I can disperse. 100% of my balance every 24 hours. So there is Crazy. no reserve, there is no hold back or anything like that. And obviously that would be coming to an end as it stands, but it would have been, you know, recently, but obviously that's been held off now. I think it's until the 31st of January. And I hope that Amazon have put some sort of transition in place. But like I said, to be perfectly honest, from my own personal point of view, we've learned to adapt, uh, albeit I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and say it was conscious, but I'd be a liar. It wasn't. It was just the way that our business has transitioned. Um, so we're not finding it as big a shock as some people uh, are going to find it. So we're kind of uh, in between, whereas I'm not that crazy bothered about it. But, you know, it will yeah. be. Um, right. So I think... 
yeah, we'll call it a day here. So it's just to let you know who's going to be joining us next week. And she's actually on the call at the moment. So we're going to be uh, joined by Amanda Hill. So hello, Amanda. Uh, Amanda's going to be joining us on Never Might or Me. Johnny won't be here. Uh, <laughs> going to be joining us on Never Mind the Buy Box next week. And we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, Amanda is a fantastic entrepreneur. Um, so we're going to be talking about all things Amazon entrepreneurship, not only from a female point of view. So, guys, please feel free to, you know, uh, to to drop in on that as well. But it's going to be we're going to be talking about um, Amanda's actually running an event uh in october mid-october where um it's going to be a, a two-day event uh in person if you remember such a thing it feels like such a long time ago and this is what we were talking about at the start of it i spoke to amanda this morning and you know amanda's really really passionate about getting back and building up uh kind of networking events as well because you know when you're a solopreneur um, you know, when you're working on your own, it can be a lonely place. And, and as, as Johnny confirmed as well, some of the best connections that you make are at network events. So we want to do everything we can at Nevermind the Buy Box and the Hive to support these type of events moving forward. So um, as it stands at the moment, I'm actually going to be uh, one of the speakers and I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be there in person. Johnny, it's right on your doorstep. So uh, hopefully uh, if you're back in at that time, you'll be there as well. Um, but the Al Carlton's going to be there Um Amanda's been through uh, some of the speakers. And like I said, it's not just all going to be about Amazon arbitrage. There's some really innovative uh, speakers that are going to be there. And it's like I said, it's going to be an opportunity to network uh, with with Amazon sellers. So we're going to talk about that more next week when our, uh, Amanda's going to join us live. So it's going to be. Uh, oh, here we go. Amanda asked me where you were earlier in the UK. And I was like, begins with W, um, I'm sure. Uh, in the UK. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's where the warehouse is. But I, I'm originally from Hertfordshire. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I thought so. I got that part right. Definitely. So yeah. in the same county, I got that bit right. So, yeah. And <laughs> Amanda was like, Watford? I was like, no, nah, I'm sure that's not it. But yeah, so hopefully you'll be back uh, back in the UK at that point. Um, but yeah, it should be a good event. And I know Al is running a, a few different events around the country. But like I said, this is going to be a, a full two day networking event uh, on a um, on uh, like a site where we can all network and drink together and eat together and do all good things together. Definitely. So we'll talk so about that those Heineken week. zeros for, for Al. <laughs> yeah, he's a big Heineken zero guy. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, all oh, bar is bar is cheap there too. Oh, you don't need to tell me that. Be dancing on the table by the end of the night. So, uh, yeah, Amanda's going to join us next week, and that you know, one not to miss because we we'll talk about that. But not only that, but also Amanda's uh, seller journey and everything she does uh, in the Amazon e-commerce space as well. So, um, Johnny, looks like you'll be going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I I, I have I haven't been sleeping very well. I'm actually I was in bed all this all this morning trying to nurse a, a headache. So, oh, was but, it yeah. the wedding? No, no, just, oh, just not, just not an feeling good. Just, yeah, an actual headache, just like lack lack of sleep and bad habits. It happens oh, sometimes. Yeah. Just going to these sort of work, uh, just to yeah, just overload of work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. don't recommend Coding it. Away, no, away. don't recommend it. But we've definitely made some uh, uh, some Progress. good progression on yeah on software and things like that. So exciting things to come. So Johnny, your sacrifice is much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, you know, not, I'm competitive. Not sure Jeff would agree. Yeah, she wouldn't agree. She would not agree. No, I know she wouldn't. I wish not. Right. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's uh, let Johnny go off and get some rest. I'll see you uh, next week, guys. One o'clock on Tuesday, if I get the stream right this time, and uh, with Amanda. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. So uh, have a great day, uh, and uh, see you next week. Cheers, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>